Hey folks, uh, another day, another saved dollar, we can only hope. Um, not really have big plans for right now. Really cold outside. Which brings us to another point. We tend to keep our garage heated with a little space heater all year long. Just for the fact so it doesn't radiate cold. I mean, you can come out and heat up a garage and you can get it to 80 degrees air temperature, but when everything is just radiating cold, including a concrete floor and all these steel parts and aluminum parts, it never feels warm, so it's never comfortable. So you never want to stay out here and do these type of projects during this time of year. So if I could get, make a suggestion, I know it's a little expensive, but we use a little box heater from Home Depot, a little $30 job. It clicks on and off. Make sure our areas are, you know, we've got the weather stripping around the door and such, but I mean, it's nothing that's not in any other house. And uh, we tend to keep it to about 55 at a minimum, even on the colder days. And then we just come out here and pop open our little space heater and bam, you know, we can pop it right up to 70 degrees. Everything feels warm and comfortable. Not to mention that we do also have a full stereo, full rack stereo. Go to eBay, do yourself a favor. I mean, you can buy stereos that when we were kids, I'm almost 50, I mean, but I can buy stereos that I would have gave my left leg for when I was a kid for nothing, and they still sound as as great as they did back in the day. I mean, I have a Marantz receiver I paid $12 for. I mean, it, it listed originally for $800 in the 80s. I mean, it, it, so, long story short, but today's objective, basically, we've Went ahead last night before things got closed up and we put a layer of primer on. From there we went and did a little sanding while we were watching the football game of our horrible team this year. Um, we've also spent a little time taping up all the areas that would ever get any type of paint in them. It's just easier I and mean, you can clean it all back out again but some of these areas are rough on the inside and they will pick up paint and they will keep it and I just have this personal thing where I know a lot of paint inside. I know they even make paint for inside of motors, which uh, dissipates heat. But I tend to want to keep it out of the motor as much as, or out of the motor and or mechanical part transmission, i.e. Uh, outdrive, as much as possible. It's just uh, naturally something to do. And it wouldn't be fair not to represent that we got plenty of uh, salty bolts and this is uh, basically they're about 20% thicker and it's all just with salt and they all need to be uh, wire brushed down with our drill and uh, I guess we got to find a couple that we had to cut off but yet yeah, and uh, that'll be our day it's not exciting it's not uh, it's not too thrilling in the, in the sense of uh, new things are to be discovered but it's all part of the process and you got to do it. So, off we go. Man, I wish you always went that fast. But, like our grandmother said, uh, don't wish your life away. It'll take that time in the end, trust me. Uh, so, we're, uh, we had to bring these guys in. We weren't sure whether they were uh, actually drying or freezing. So, still look a little shiny for being a flat paint. So, probably 
probably freezing. Uh, then we used our implements of instruction down here. We've got our wire wheels from Home Depot and our power drill on a little block of wood, which is really useful. We found basically you turn two two by fours on the sides and basically build that little step right there. And you'd be amazed on how many times we've drilled holes in it and everything else. But to get back to the issue at hand, we have ourselves our new bolts, our really our re purpose bolts and you can see the difference and I tell you when they go when this thing goes back together it'll be a whole different world whole different world about how it will go back together compared to what it's like taking it apart I mean these things were salt licks I mean they truly were or salt pencils I guess we should say and we've got to our bearing case and let's see here this guy came out real nice. I mean, real nice. And to our point yesterday, we were talking about how that seal in there, if you ever have to do a rear rinse, a rear seal for a leaking drive shaft or a leaking, leaking prop shaft, this is where you'll have to go to get it. And if nobody gets anything at all out of these videos, at least you'll see that this is what you'll have to do just to get to this. To replace it and then of course you'd have to reassemble everything in reverse without any changes which is doable for a backyarder as you say so that's the purpose of these whole videos in the first place and you know I, I wouldn't panic about using or, uh, or or taking it in my own hands about doing some of this stuff Volvos are not the most expensive out drives on the planet I mean eBay you can scarf up some parts if you, even if you want to just kind of experiment and see what's going on. Uh, especially some of the older, older parts, they're kind of useless. They get real cheap, so if you really want to see what's going on inside. And, uh, you know, it's a good one to, to uh, experiment with, so to speak, without breaking the budget. So, this is where we are. I just wanted to give a little homage to the dirty work, basically. And it, it takes the extra time, but it's well worth it in the end. And uh, we figure with these guys up here, it'll be uh, give them a coat of paint, let them off gas outside, because we definitely don't want to do that in the garage. And uh, then uh, bring them in and let them, let them set up overnight, because they definitely aren't... Uh, aren't drying any time soon being that it's pretty much below 30 degrees outside at the moment so we shall move on to the next next project throw this up on my trash can bench here most versatile thing on the whole garage that's for sure tiny piece of plywood here Drag it in, drag it out, leave it outside, leave it inside, it doesn't matter. Perfect, perfect bench in my world. Ah, man, I spent 50% of the time cleaning up the mess and 30% of the time cleaning up parts from the, from the project. And by the time it's all said and done, we get about 5% of the time we get to actually build nice, clean, beautiful parts. But... Besides that, the only uh, the thing I really want to emphasize here is, is basically I just, somebody gave me a piece of advice a long time ago, and I wish I would have followed it back the first time, and I have ever since, is in a project like this, if you decide to make any changes at all, do not throw away anything until a week after it runs, and after that, it's even at your own risk, because uh, you never know. I, it's amazing. I, I've my first uh, experience was throwing away a flywheel for a Chrysler. Little did I know a 10-inch flywheel for a Chrysler is made of gold. So I paid for it, and I was about 19, 20 years old at the time, and I could not afford it. But I scraped the money together, and it took me forever to pay it off. So, but in this situation, like I said, just even if you make any changes, even old gears, anything, uh, old seals, just stick them in a Ziploc baggie. 
it, it, it's it's better to if something leaks or something later on, you can always go back and take your baggie and take it to the local Volvo dealer. Ours is Kobe Marine, and uh, basically they'll sit there and just match them up for you. So.